When Jesus was baptized in the Jordan, the grace of the Holy Spirit was poured upon him. Quoting the prophet Isaiah, Jesus boldly proclaimed, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Over the next three years, Jesus demonstrated that indeed the Spirit of God was upon him, in order that he might both announce and bring forth the kingdom of God. During his public ministry, he gathered others around him who would share in this mission. After his death and resurrection, when it was time for Jesus to ascend to heaven, he told his followers to wait for the promise of the Father, that they might have both the power and the fellowship of the Spirit in order to continue to proclaim and make present the kingdom of God. On Pentecost Sunday, that promise was fulfilled. They were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as a fire, which parted and came to rest on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. With the coming of the Holy Spirit, the lives of individuals were changed. The community itself was transformed. The church was born. At the beginning of the Second Vatican Council, Pope John XXIII led the Church in praying for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Renew your wonders in this our day, as by a new Pentecost. Grant your Church that being of one mind and steadfast in prayer with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and following the lead of blessed Peter, it may advance the reign of our divine Savior, the reign of truth and justice, the reign of love and peace. Amen. The Second Vatican Council was convened from 1962 through 1965 fulfilling John XXIII's wishes to open a window of fresh air for the Church. A few years later, seemingly as a result of John XXIII's prayer for renewal, a significant event took place that would forever change the lives of millions of Catholics and the Church itself. In 1967, a small group of Catholic students had been studying the early church and the impact of Pentecost. They had also been in dialogue with other Christian denominations, including Pentecostal groups, in an effort to better understand a broad perspective of Christian experience with the Holy Spirit. On a weekend retreat, these Catholic students prayed that, in some way, they too might discover a renewed sense of Pentecost in their lives. I was one of the students at Duquesne who made that retreat in February 67. Saturday night during a birthday party planned for one of the students, I, I wandered up into the chapel and knelt in the presence of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. And I trembled with the sense of His majesty and His holiness. And although I felt somewhat frightened, I knew that I needed to stay there and pray. And in the next moments, just in the depths of my heart, I prayed a prayer of complete surrender to the Father saying, Father, I place my life in your hands, and I desire to follow Jesus, your Son, whatever that means. If it means to suffer, I accept that. Only teach me to love with his love. As I prayed that prayer kneeling, I found myself in the next few moments prostrate before Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, and flooded, overwhelmed with the sense of God's personal love for me. In the next hour, God sovereignly drew all the students at that retreat house up into the chapel where we knelt before Jesus, 
some lifting their hands in prayer for the first time, others flooded with a sense of joy, some laughing for joy, others weeping, some saying they had a great desire to praise God but didn't have the words. They prayed the Veni Creator Spiritus, the very same hymn sung by Pope Leo XIII on January 1st, 1901, asking for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the whole church. Come, O Creator blessed, and in our souls take up thy rest. Come with thy grace and heavenly aid to fill the hearts which thou hast made. Great Paraclete to thee we cry, O highest gift of God most high, O font of life and fire of love, and sweet anointing from above. Finding it impossible to keep this good news to themselves, the students shared with others their experience. Other students, and even their teachers, began to join them, praying that they too might experience this fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And they did. The charismatic renewal continued to spread at an amazing rate throughout the world. Like the students who first experienced this outpouring of the Holy Spirit, those who prayed for the experience that came to be known as baptism in the Spirit had experiences similar to all the others. A new depth of prayer, love for the Scriptures, a devotion to the Eucharist, a heart for evangelization. a call to conversion, and a life of holiness. Many vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and religious life. Concern for the needy. The formation of deeper relationships and even lay communities. Experiencing various spiritual gifts or charisms. Healing. Music. I've met Jesus, her son, of the Holy Spirit, a big God, to heaven above, to a Father's kingdom of love. This charismatic renewal has indeed been a source of personal renewal for individuals and an impetus for renewal within the church itself. Ever since I came in contact with the renewal in 1972 and experienced a, a quiet baptism in the Holy Spirit, I've noticed great changes both in my priestly life and my priestly ministry. The first part about my priestly life, well, uh, 
I began to experience a tremendous joy in my priesthood. I began to have a great compassion for people. Uh, Jesus became the center of my life. Everything else which for me before was important was second and third place. There was only one thing in my mind that was Jesus. My involvement in the charismatic renewal now more than 25 years ago has changed my life in an extraordinary way. And I say that as a person who has always loved the Catholic Church, has always been faithful to my Catholic practice of my Catholic faith. I discovered through the charismatic renewal, through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, something deeper than that which I'd had previously. And that deeper thing was a new relationship with Jesus Christ. That changed my life. The change in my life from being a businessman where I was directing people, you do that, you do that, you do something else, and expecting that people did it. I find now that all that training I had in business for so many years, I now am able to use in the service of the Lord. And that rather than me being the one who directs with my own will, my own thoughts, my own decision, it's rather now, Lord, what do you want me to do? And using the gifts and the skills that he's given me to bring others into this relationship with Jesus. Charismatic renewal has helped many, many people in different areas. First of all, it helped them to understand who they are as Christians, that we are baptized, that we are confirmed, and therefore we have Jesus in us. Now Jesus is alive, and Jesus is not asleep. He is very much alive in us, and he wants to talk to us, and he wants to communicate with us, and not only that, he gave us so many gifts through the Holy Spirit and therefore he is asking us to use these gifts and uh, to use these gifts to be like him to continue his work uh, to be better husbands to be better wives to be better fathers and mothers to be better priests and bishops so that's the first thing that I see it has helped a lot of people to understand who they are now once you know who you are therefore you can talk about it with passion you talk about it with enthusiasm, which literally means enteu, which means to be in God. What was happening among Catholics that got the attention of Cardinal Leon Joseph Sunins, a key architect of the Second Vatican Council. In 1973, Cardinal Sunins, Archbishop of Malines in Brussels, invited leaders of the Charismatic Renewal to establish their international office in his diocese in Brussels, Belgium. On Pentecost Sunday in 1975, Cardinal Sunins and 10,000 individuals who had this charismatic experience met with Pope Paul VI in St. Peter's Basilica. Dear sons and daughters, you are striving in union with the whole church for renewal, spiritual renewal, authentic renewal, Catholic renewal, renewal in the Holy Spirit. We are pleased to see signs of this renewal. A taste for prayer, contemplation, praising God, attentiveness to the grace of the Holy Spirit. We know likewise that you wish to open your hearts to reconciliation with God. This is likewise the challenge of opening your hearts in your brethren in need. There are no limits to the challenge of love. Yes, dear sons and daughters, this is a day of joy, but also a day of resolve and determination to open ourselves to the Holy Spirit, to remove what is opposed of his action 
and to proclaim in the Christian authenticity of our daily lives that Jesus is Lord. church has seen the fruits of your devotion to prayer in a deepened commitment to holiness of life and love and the word of God. We have noted with particular joy the way in which leaders of the renewal have more and more developed and broadened ecclesial vision and have made efforts to make this vision increasingly a reality for those who depend of them for guidance. And we have likewise seen the signs of your generosity in sharing God's gifts with the unfortunate of this world in justice and charity so that all people may experience the priceless dignity that is theirs in Christ. I welcome you to Rome in the joy of the risen Christ. Your meeting in Rome at the center of the church comes at the time when she is giving thanks to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ for the sacrifice of his Son and for the action of the Holy Spirit which filled her with new life. Because of human freedom, many doors do not open to him. And for this reason, I ask you and all the members of the charismatic renewal to continue to cry aloud to the world with me. Open the doors to the Redeemer. The Church's mission, mission 
is to proclaim Christ to the world. And you share effectively in this mission insofar as you, as your groups and communities are rooted in the local churches, in your dioceses and parishes. Grazie al movimento carismatico, tanti cristiani, Thanks to the charismatic movement, many Christians, men and women, youth and adults have rediscovered Pentecost as a living and present reality in their daily life. I desire that the spirituality of Pentecost be spread in the church as a renewed thrust of prayer, holiness, communion and proclamation.